Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I want to explain the concept of generics. Generics basically helps us write code that can be reused for multiple types. It basically ensures that the same code can be used for multiple types. I know I just said that, but you understand what I mean once we go into our example here. Generics aren't just available in Java. Today we'll be doing it in Java, but they're not just available in Java. They're also in Rust, um, C Sharp, TypeScript, and C++, I believe. But C++, they're called templates instead of generics. But let's dive into the code so you can understand what I'm talking about. So let's start with something very simple, right? Let's say I have this delivery service class, right? It's a simple class and it's essentially just a holder class to store a string called package type. And we have two methods here. One is a void method that just sets the package type with whatever you pass it in. And then the other one is just to return the package type. Now this delivery service class works perfectly fine, but there's one problem with it rather. The thing is this class only works with a string, right? If I wanted to put in a different type, say I wanted the, our, our delivery service to work with something other than a string, then I would either have to come and change this here to maybe like an int or a different type, but it only works with a string, right? Let's say we want to deliver something that's not a string. Let's say we want to deliver a book or an electronic item or just something else, right? We'd have to modify this class a lot in order for that to happen. Now, generics essentially helps us make sure this class can work with any type that's not just a string. And the way we do that is by modifying this generic class. This is how we'll do it. Now on here, we're going to add a T here. This T is going to signify that the class is supposed to work with any type, right? Now for the name of the package item, rather for the data type of the package item, we're just going to replace this with T as well. That way it's not going to be a string, right? It's not hard coded to a string. Same thing with our set package method, right? Instead of it being a string, we're just going to replace it with a T. So I'm sure you're noticing a pattern here. Wherever we have a data type, Instead of it to be hard coded to that data type, we'll just replace it with T. So the same thing here, we'll now replace it with T. Now, this delivery service class is now set up to work with any data type, right? Because we're not hard coding it to a specific data type. It's now set to work with T. Now, let's say we have a book class, right? I created a few example classes, right? There's this book class that's, you know, that has a book. And then we have a member in here that keeps track of the title. And then we can then, you know, create an instance of the book by passing in a title and then it'll set it. By default, every object has a toString method, but we're overriding our toString method to return a string and it's going to return the book plus the title of the book. Now we did the same thing here for an electronics class, right? The same thing, except here we're storing the brand. We create, we have a constructor to create the object and then we override the toString method. And then finally, same thing for groceries, right? String constructor and then we've overwritten the method for that now if we go to our main class right here um i have commented this out but i'm going to uncomment it so now we have our delivery service right and we want to say create a delivery service for a book for example now what we can simply do is create an instance of our delivery service and create the type of sorry passing the type that we want the delivery service to handle right in this case which will be a book which is the class that we created here and you know it's a new delivery service and we can now say okay our book service which is what we said it can set a package which is now our new book remember our delivery service can set a package of any type right it can set a package of any type it's not hard coded to set a package of string or hard coded to set a package of integer it can set one of any type so what we're doing here in our main method is that we're setting it right to set the package of a new book. And this is going to work because our delivery service is of type book and we're setting a new book. And then if we now print this out, which we're going to do, it'll call the book service, right? Which is our book service here dot get package. Then our book service here is this delivery service dot get package and it'll just return the package item. I've done something very similar for our electronic item, except the delivery service is for an electronic item type and the same thing for for groceries, right? If we run this, this is what we're going to get. So after running this, 
as we expected it simply just prints out you know delivered followed by the book service package in this case which was the book the pragmatic programmer that we created here same thing with the apple iphone for electronics and same thing with groceries for banana because that's what we created here now the really really interesting part here that i want you to understand is this delivery service is now working for any type and the main reason why it's able to do that is because we've turned it into a generic class right using this t here meaning it can accept any type as long as we pass it in to the class like this now generics aren't just for classes right we can also have generic methods as well right let's say we have this utility class and essentially what it does is it's just supposed to print the package item dot to string right but you've probably noticed right here we've put t to indicate that it's a generic method and what it's going to take in as well is of type t right t is the keyword here right so whenever we want the method or the class to be able to take in any object we just use t and then here it'll just print the package item dot to string now because we've overridden our you know individual classes to string method these will get called so if we go to our main class and then we uncomment this out then we uncomment this out we actually don't need this one anymore so what's going to happen is we'll just print the exact same thing right yeah so the exact same thing is going to happen right except this time we're using the utility package to print an item and the i the print package detail is taking in any type it's taking in a type of book it's taking a type of electronic taking in a type of grocery right and that is simply because we've made the method a generic method right where it's going to take in a package item of any type and then it'll just print the to string method of that item which we have defined in our individual classes here our to string method and that's pretty much it that's the concept behind generics right if you want a class to be able to take in an object of any type you make it a generic type this way we don't need to create individual classes for each of our types now if you're someone who has been using java for some time you will notice this pattern kind of looks familiar in that let's say we want to create a hash map what are we going to do we're going to say hash map followed by the key what's going to be the key key can be anything we want right let's say we want the key to be an integer and then we want the value to be a string right so we're going to say map to go to new hash map right and the reason why this is possible right the reason why we can put our integer here and a string here and also potentially do the exact same thing right say we want to do a character here and then we can do a string and then we call this maybe second map the reason why the hash map is allowing us to do this is because a hash map is a generic class, right? Where it's allowing us to store key and value here, right? The key and the value can be of any type, right? It's not hard coded. That's why it's K and V here. The, a very similar thing happened for stack as well, right? Um, for our stack, we can store, let's say, want to store a stack of characters, right? And then we call it stack um, is equal to new stack. Exact same thing, right? It is a generic class right it allows us to store any type that we want so that's how the stack class works under the hood where we can store a double if we want to right <clears throat> then double number two and that's the whole idea behind generate classes right it just allows us to be, it allows the class to be able to store any data type that's passed into it now it's worth noting that the type that's passed in as a generic has to be an object it can be a primitive type so you can't use something like int here right it's not going to work because int is a primitive type and then whatever you pass in as the generic has to be an object and primitive types are not objects that's just one thing to note the exact same thing with your own custom delivery classes as well that's just something to note yeah otherwise that's it that's the whole idea behind generics if you have any questions leave them in the comments below i'll try to get to them if you want more courses and if you want to be coached by me one-on-one -on -one, Check out the ProDev Coaching Program. It's a program designed to help software engineers get better at their skills and land higher paying jobs. Check it out at prodev.umacodes.com. And if you want other courses that I've created, check out umacodes.com. Until then, I will catch you on the next one. Peace.